Hey guys, it's Coded Steel, and welcome to another tutorial in the processing programming language. So, guys, I had to decide like which way I was going to go with this series. I decided to assume that the majority of people that are going to view this series are have little to no programming experience whatsoever. So, we're going to start from the basics. Then is where where I want to start with this if loops for loops else loops while loops all these different types of loops so we're not going to cover that in this video in this video i'm going to talk about the basic the uh graphics stuff that processing can do for you so last time we discussed the function point what i want to discuss this time is the line function really quickly the line and quickly guys you guys remember the size function from last time i'm going to resize the window to 200 by 200 because i've had tested this a few times and i've had the tendency to go out of bounds so i want to make sure i stay in bounds this function as you guys might guess is going to draw a line and there's our line right there so the line function takes two four parameters one specifying the first coordinate x and y and then one specif or the next set of coordinates specifying the next point, x and y. So as you guys know from a math class or something, a line has to have two points. That's the characteristic of it. That's the minimum amount of points you need to draw a line. So that's how the line function is done. So that's the line function. What if I want the line function to be a different color? I want to change the color of the line. Well, we have this function then that we can use called stroke and if i spell it correctly it will allow you to change the color of the line so we have there's two different types of stroke functions there's a stroke function that takes a grayscale parameter which goes from 0 to 255 i just type in put one number in and it or you know and it's just going to give me well not 287 187 and or 180 or whatever it's that's one parameter it's going to give me something with like just it's going to give me all the gray colors black gray all the way up to white if i put that in there it's going to give me a different intensity of the grayscale type colors so just to show you guys how that works it's probably going to be almost impossible to see but you, there's a very faint line right there that's grayscale there's no red green or blue inside at present in it but what if i want there to be a little more color guys i want my line to be red so i'm going to go ahead and get, show you how to do the red stuff the struther part of the stroke command allows you to specify red, green, and blue. And if I build this, it's going to draw me a red line because the first one is red. Similarly, if I rebuild this here, this is going to give me blue or green. Sorry. And then there's my green line. And the same thing if I change it to blue, which I'm not going to do. You guys can test it yourself. Um, there's a lot to cover with this type of stuff. But that's how the stroke command works. It's basically your brush. It's your your outline, your border. So next thing I'm going to cover really quickly is the rect function. So what rect will do is it's going to draw a, a rectangle or a square. In this case, it'll be a square, which is 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels long. So there's my square. And as you guys can see, it has a black border here. The black border actually is controlled by the stroke command. So the stroke command before, like I said, we can use stroke and that is basically our border, how, how our border is controlled. We have two different things. You have stroke and you have fill for a, a shape. A line just has stroke, which controls the color of the line. But a shape has a stroke and a fill. It's going to control how, you know, whatever, how red or whatever, you know, you can have a red outline or green. I'm going to have a green outline and I'm going to have a red fill to it. So I'm going to show you guys how that kind of works. This is how stroke and fill works. There's our green border and our red fill in the middle of it. So that's how stroke and fill work with shapes. There's different types of shapes. I can also do this, guys. What if I didn't, what if I wanted, uh, I could, you know, I could do the, fill, the stroke like this. And I could specify 255 00 if I didn't want a black border. And then I could do fill 255 00. And this is going to give me a red square with no fill at all. So you can see that that works like that. 
I can also do this in another way to where I don't have to specify any colors whatsoever. And it's called no stroke. I just type no stroke with a capital S and build it. And it does the same thing as just setting the stroke to the red. I don't have to set it though. So that's how that works. There's one other, I'm gonna cover one more shape function guys. There's just so much. I'm gonna cover a few more shape functions actually, probably two. But here's the ellipse shape function. Ellipse is going to allow you to draw circles or oblong uh, round shapes that have no sides because the circle has no sides. So as you guys can see, I get a red circle here with because my fill is set to red and, and it's ellipse. What if I stretch, I'm gonna change the ellipse location to 50, 50, and I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna make it longer. So you guys know that the ellipse can draw, oh, now it'll work. Okay, and that stretches the shape. Just so you know how the ellipse, the rect function does the same thing. I can make a rectangle or I can make a square. The ellipse function, I can make a circle or I can make what's an ellipse, which is like a stretch circle or whatever else. So that is how all that type of stuff works. Those are the shape commands. There's other shapes, guys. There's triangle, there's you know arcs there's all the stuff but i don't have time to go through all of that stuff with you guys so all i'm going to try to do is just show you guys where you can look at all of the shape referencing stuff yourself and if you look here you have 2d primitives there's arc ellipse line point quad rect triangle arc takes two points and it's just going to draw an arc, or maybe it takes, I think it might take three points, actually. Yes, it takes three points. And it actually tells you how much to arc it by a pi constant. So that's how arc works. Ellipse, you guys saw me do ellipse. Line, you saw me do line. line point, you saw me do point. Quad takes eight parameters. So that's going to draw a quadrilateral. You give it four X and Y sets of coordinates, and it's going to draw a quadrilateral between those four points rect we saw what rect does and then you've got triangle triangle you give it three sets you give it a three three coordinates and uh three sets of x and y points and it's going to tell you you know where to draw the triangle at and it'll fill it in for you and all that stuff with like we had the fill the no fill and the stroke the no stroke no fill so no fill means we we don't have a fill for it. We don't fill it in white. We just leave it gray or whatever, or whatever the background color is. So that's just like no stroke and stroke. So you guys should know all four of these by now. Because we now, fill is just like, fill works, no fill works the same way as no stroke. So just so you guys know that. So these four commands should be easy for you to understand. These ones, I recommend you play around with rect and quad on your own time. They're not hard to figure out how to use these graphics primitive stuff. But we don't have enough time to cover all of this graphics type stuff. But you guys can see how all of this stuff will work. And then in a later tutorial when I use the function, just know, you know, just look it up on your own time, figure out how it works, and, and you'll be good to go. So anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Next time, I think we're going to start covering variables and processing. So stay tuned, and I will talk to you guys next time.